Well, uh, good morning, good evening, uh, good night, I guess, depending on where you are. Um, uh, I'm uh, Dave Fisher, and I'm going to give a, a talk on Hatching the Clutch, which is um, a guide to the Apache Incubator. And um, this is a talk I've given in various forms um, for a few Apache cons and also at COSCON a couple times. Uh, so, um, first, um, I'm, um, Dave Fisher and, um, in addition to being a PMC member of, uh, many PMCs, including the incubator, I'm also the VP of Apache Petrie, which is a, um, an alternative experiment in um, moving communities to the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, uh, it's sort of a gradual uh, way of, um, you already have a community and you can um, uh, consider whether the Apache way is for you as a project. Um, so that's just something to note. Um, I included my email address here and the link to my Wimsy page if you want to see all the PMCs and stuff I'm involved with. Okay, the there are basically you know two topics. Um, we're going to talk about uh, uh, incubation steps, and we're also going to talk about how we monitor. And in addition, we're going to talk about maybe things we can do to improve um, how we monitor the clutch. So the incubation lifestyle essentially um, has these uh, four uh, different um, uh, phases. Uh, the first phase is really before you're in the uh, incubator, uh, you're in the proposal phase and, you know, you're finding your community, you're deciding that you, you know, you need to find champion and a, a mentor. I highly recommend that your champion um, be involved uh, and that's your proposal before you bring it to the incubator uh, general list. Uh, I think and I also highly recommend that you make sure that your initial community is ready to sign an ICLA and understands what's going to happen there. Uh, and, and then you can discuss it with the incubator because things will go a lot smoother and you'll also start a lot better. Um, so startup is you know, all about establishing um, your uh, resources, your mailing list so you can start communicating and um, your CLAs so that you can um, start, um, you know, you can have an Apache ID and you can start doing things and your repositories so that you can, you know, start um, making releases. Then during incubation, there are um, several uh, important steps. Uh, you know, you're going to be building a community. That's that's really the the most important thing, uh, getting people involved. Uh, sometimes that's hard because people may not come until they see some software. There's also, excuse me, there's also making um, releases and, and getting that together. Uh, there's also making sure your name is suitable. Now, that has started to be moved up a little sooner in the life cycle. Uh, in practice, uh, it's really almost in the proposal stage that, uh, or just past the proposal stage where you want to make sure your name is good because it's rather expensive to change names um, in terms of the infrastructure and resources that you may have already allocated. Uh, it's also important to get a website together, uh, although there are some resources involved uh, that can be used until you have that. Um, then after this is all said and done, uh, you have a diverse community, uh, you've looked at the maturity model, um, and you know, you, you, you're ready to graduate. So here we are at the proposal stage. 
So, you know, initial community, you're going to be getting, you know, your your initial committers, et cetera, together. Now, if you have a community of, of two or one developer, uh, it's probably not big enough to bring. You want to make sure that you, you know, have, um, you know, several developers involved. And it, it's helpful if they're from a different company uh, as well, so that it's truly already a, um, a diverse group. Uh, that's going to save you time later. You might uh, end up um, being in incubation a long time or fail if you only have one or two developers. Um, in fact, you're going to find your champion. Now, a champion is someone who will guide you into Apache. So you want to have an experienced Apache person involved. Uh, you're going to have mentors or champion may or may not be a mentor. But you're, you're going to want to have three mentors. So you can see already that you're asking people to help you through incubation. And if there are more mentors than developers, uh, that's kind of a, a, a red flag. Um, so uh, and the thing about mentors is, you know, you want to be engaged. The mentor is volunteered. Um, over time, mentors sometimes, uh, you know, find other things to do. They disappear, and that's just the way it is. Um, we have lots of examples of proposals. They're rather verbose, but you know, the important thing is, you know, identifying, you know, uh, dependencies, uh, licenses, you know, various things that may become issues while you're developing, just so they're upfront. Um, and then there's a discussion. Sometimes there's a long discussion. Sometimes it's a short discussion. It just, it all varies. Uh, you can look at the archives on for general at um, uh, incubator to uh, see uh, uh, what some of those discussions have been like. Okay. Um, this is just sort of a little more detail I just discussed. Um, you know, it's it's uh, these are important um, um, bits and pieces that you really want to deal with, um, and um, you know, some people are self-serving and getting everything together, but it's it's really important to make sure that there's a good discussion first, um, and uh, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, the proposal, um, and typically, you know, in, in, in almost every case, um, once the discussion is over, the incubator is happy to accept a project. Um, very seldom is there uh, a negative vote at this point. Um, and, um, you know, this is, um, uh, and, and another thing is through the process, the incubator is um, uh, very um, lenient with um, lack of progress. Um, and, um, you know, sometimes the projects discover the incubator is not for, or Apache is not for them and they quickly leave. Um, sometimes they noisily leave. Anyway. Um, you know, the startup. So typically, uh, there are three emailing lists um, created. There's the development list. This is where you need to have your development discussions. Even if you're, you know, using Slack for support uh, and, or for just um, chatting and figuring out things, you still need to make sure you bring discussions to the mailing list. Now, it's interesting. Um, I mentored one project, um, Pulsar, and they use Slack, and I got them to at least put a digest from Slack weekly onto the mailing list. Um, it didn't really generate much conversation, but at least it's recorded there. 
Um, but during incubation, there weren't a lot of discussions on the mailing list, but they were still moving along very well. And um, now that they're graduated a couple of years and the project is successful, the community is growing, the discussions are actually happening much more frequently. So uh, it's an important thing. And another reason why it's important is on Slack, you're talking with people synchronously. Um, it's not really a good asynchronous discussion environment, but a development mailing list is asynchronous. So, you know, you someone sends a message and then someone sees it 12 hours later on their side of the world and they respond. So if you want to be a global project, to be an Apache project, it's a development list that's really important. Now there's also a private list that gets created and that should be used as little as possible. Um, and it's mostly used to discuss people who may or may not be elected to be become committers or um, you know, on the pod, projects management committee. Uh, and you want to do that in private because uh, you know you don't want to embarrass someone or you don't, you know, you know if, if there's some issue that people have with them for whatever reason, you want to make sure that that's like kept out of the public archives. There's also cases about trademarks or a security issue that uh, you don't want to talk about in public where the private list would be the fallback uh, place. Um, there's also a commits list. Now, not every project creates a commits list, but then later they discover that, hey, we want a commits list or a notifications list or something like that because, um, you know, our development list is too noisy with um, GitHub notifications or, or commits or, Etc. So you want to move it, you probably want to establish a commits list right away. Now, um, the clutch process tracks that you have a development list and you have a commit list. Um, you do need to sign your ICLAs as quickly as possible. Uh, it's important to let um, your prospective community members know that you're, they're, going to, they're going to be asked to do that. Um, and so that they are not surprised and they're ready to, to become part of the project. Um, and um, you send your ICL agreement, which you can get from um, the website, uh, uh, www.apache.org very easily um, under licenses. Um, and uh, there's also in the same place, there's an agreement um, for SGAs or a CCLA um, for, the, for a company donating um, uh, software. Uh, also, a, a company may sign a CCLA to acknowledge uh, individual committers who work for them that uh, it's okay for them to contribute. Uh, now that may depend on you know what your work agreement is, uh, whether you need your company to do that. Uh, for GitHub repositories, and pretty much everyone is in GitHub um, these days, um, you uh, work with Infra and your mentor uh, to have the GitHub repositories transferred and that usually involves, um, you know, making sure that uh, the uh, infra admin has temporary uh, access uh, to the repository so that they can do the transfer. Um, and um, we also have something called Apache Gitbox, so that you know Apache is as custodians of software for the public good, uh, just in case GitHub ever goes away, which now I think is highly unlikely, but several years ago that was possible. Um, we keep our own 
mirror of all the repositories. And Gitbox does a lot of other things that are real, that's really cool. Uh, but um, it, um, it it is also a place where if you don't want to sign the GitHub um, uh, uh, agreement, and there are people who don't, you can still contribute to a Git-based um, project by using Gitbox directly and pull pull requests and et cetera. Um, or and commits. Um, for GitHub, there's a two-factor authentication that you set up with your account to map to map to your GitHub username. Okay, we've got everyone information now. Okay, here's the incubation. Um, you want to recognize your contributors. Um, as quickly as you can. Uh, if they're doing something valuable, um, bring them in. If they're showing good judgment, bring them in. Um, you want to recognize people who are organizing meetups and doing documentation and helping the community grow. They don't necessarily have to be coding. They can be um, evangelizing the, the project and um, you know, being the welcome wagon uh, and, you know, helping people you know get oriented um well we say it again and again if it doesn't happen on the list it um didn't happen so um you know and we have a code of conduct essentially so that's you know basically be respectful um and asynchronous communications and then there's you know uh you want, you know, making, and this is probably the hardest part of incubation in a lot of ways is making the Apache releases and getting them through. Uh, I know Justin's given a talk on, on this in great detail, uh, but, you know, you want to make sure that your license is compatible. Uh, your source headers are set up properly. Um, and one thing about the source header process, usually it, it's done by a committer from the donating company will be the one who makes all those adjustments. Um, that way it's really clear the provenance of that. Um, and uh, there's a release manager role and you prepare release artifacts. Um, some of these things have moved um, and we have our own incubator has a few additional rules. So uh, one of which is the second vote on the, I, on the general list. And the, the reason why we do that second vote is that all uh, software releases at the ASF have to be approved by, um, by, the project, by the project and the project management committee. And all of the uh, incubating projects are the responsibility of the IPMC. And so we need to follow the three plus one rule of, of vetting everything, that, making sure that three uh, people who have been, um, that have responsibility and are on an official committee have, have uh, voted and approved it. So, um, one reason why it's important to have three mentors on your uh, podling is so that those three mentors uh, can um, vote for your release and help you get your release proper before you get to the general list. Um, and then when you get to the general list, they should vote quickly or just echo their vote. Uh, personally, I think that having voted on the other list is sufficient um a, a proper um vote on general uh that summarizes the list and points out the mentor votes uh would be uh, should be sufficient now one thing the general uh vote does do is it allows other people uh from the incubator to also vet the release, and you know so these things are can be very complicated, and there can it can be easy to miss um, some issues. Um, 
uh, with the notice file, et cetera. So, um, you know, just um, know that this is this is the part that sometimes is a problem. A lot of communities, especially these days, are used to you know doing everything with continuous um, improvement and deployment, and um, this you know asynchronous 72 hours minimum. Uh, some projects are a week. Um, process um, uh, can be frustrating. Either you have a lot of artifacts that you're releasing, or you're just used to um, a very quick cadence, and so that can be a big culture clash. So make sure that you're ready for this before you come to the incubator. Um, back to the suitable name search. Um, you're going to work. There's a Jira. Um, and you submit a JIRA and you have to do the research on your name, but there's some good guidance and you can look at other uh, name requests. And uh, once you fill that out, uh, the VP of brand and the brand committee uh, can review it and approve the name. Um, sometimes a uh, name might you know, be fine in you know, your language or understanding, but then, um, when um, someone in the US Googles it, um, the name pops a porn site up at the top or something like that. So, um, you know, mostly, you know, names are acceptable, but, um, you know, obviously we couldn't do Apache Google or et cetera. So, you know, think about the name um, um, carefully. Uh, you're going to build your website um, on Apache infrastructure. Um, there's places to put the logo. Your download page has rules uh, about uh, releases and where you refer to them. All releases have to go onto Apache infrastructure. There's a checker. We have clutch analysis. Um, so, um, which helps um you know you figure out some things um and also we have a new system called um asf pelican which is replacing which has replaced the apache cms uh and uh i'm going to be giving a talk on that uh in an hour and a half or so um so that might be a choice for your project website. Let's see what happens if I click this. Okay, so this is the clutch analysis. Um, so, you know, we're looking at things about the website, about, you know, different projects and, you know, does it have a commits list, has a website, you know, distribution area, et cetera. Um, and there's some other bits and pieces here. Um, got definitions of everything here. Um, now there's one thing that projects keep called the status file. And there's also a YAML file. And for the last four or five years, there's been an effort to convert from the status file uh, to uh, a YAML file. And um, I think we're in a position now with ASF Pelican where uh, I think we can complete that. So I'm gonna get that to that at the end of the at the end of the talk. Oh my my screen went away. There it is. Okay. Well, now we have a vibrant community. So we're ready to graduate. You've got community growth. You're making your decisions. You've got clean releases. Uh, the community development project has a maturity model, and you can do that assessment. 
um, and you can discuss in the project your answers and making sure that you, you understand all the bits and pieces. Um, graduation resolutions, really pretty straightforward. Uh, and uh, the main thing is it lists out who the PMC members will be and who the project chair will be. Um, and then once that's ready um, and the project is uh, agreed, then you can discuss on general. And uh, then the incubator PMC agrees. Uh, and um, then the board has to establish the committee. And so that has to happen at the monthly board meeting. So you submit a resolution. Um, and basically that's pasting. There's a, uh, a board tool where you paste things in and um, and then submit. And the, the board meeting is, is typically the third Wednesday of every month. So uh, keep that in mind. You're not you're not a PMC until the board says you're a PMC, um, and your your chair will get an email say welcoming uh, them to the new role your their new role. Okay, let's talk a little bit about clutch improvements. Um, one thing that came up the other day. Uh, on the general list is that um, uh, a number of podlings were having issues with um, uh, download pages not conforming to policy and not properly pointing to uh, releases uh, in our archive or um, in our release area and um, and our downloads area. Um, you know, we need to have you know, official source releases need to be uh in the foundation infrastructure uh because that way we assure we'll keep them forever um every release goes into the archive uh so your older releases and non-current releases should be served out of the archive if you want to make them available um and um so Anyway, so the thought was um, on the list, which I don't think is quite right. Maybe it is if you have the default, um, but you should have the URL uh, recorded. So I think we should add that to the YAML status files. Um, I think that, um, uh, and then we can ask um, Whimsy. I think Sab already is doing it um, uh, to analyze the download page. Uh, and put it on the on the pod, on the podling um, um, uh, page, um, so that we can include it in the clutch analysis, etc. Um, now, converting to ASF Pelican um, includes some of the following: um, the podling status files um, and of both the YAML and XML should be moved to Git. And then the XML files can be converted to Markdown. I, I, I've tested that. Um, there's an old Forest um, uh, XLST um, uh, uh, file that with a couple adjustments worked well. Uh, so all of our old projects, a lot of projects have been through the incubator and they're all in the projects directory. So that can all be converted to Markdown. And then we can start doing um, uh, uh, such things to take the, some of the uh, structure. The current XML files have structure where status goes into certain uh, places and is also in the YAML file. So we've got to sort of two sources of record because we never finished that transaction that transition so if we finish that transition then the the um, uh, status uh, project file can sort of it can be a, a description of the project written by the project and uh, then um, include pieces of information from the YAML file and can include some clutch analysis 
So I can ex I can explain better how that's done um, uh, with ASF Pelican Talk. Um, there's um, there's ways of getting data and analyzing data in ASF Pelican, um, and um, I, there's examples of that. Uh, and then we can redo the clutch analysis page. So we think about it. So for instance, these items here are, okay, I'm just gonna go through this. This is, this, is, this is the pod link. You know, we don't really, we're almost always sponsored by the incubator. So I don't think this column adds much value. Um, the day of incubation and how many days in incubation, this is, I think it's still important. And then this, this is whether the project's on a monthly um, reporting cycle or a quarterly. And then this is the which quarter. Uh, and then this is if they have a status page. So this would change to say, make sure they have a YAML file and um, with Git, uh, the update date is a little harder than um, Subversion is to get the information out. With Subversion, you just can do an SVN log. Uh, but um, with Git, you gotta look. You gotta look at the log and do a long form of the log, and then you can sort of find a date from there. Um, so. That's gonna, that might be a little more difficult. This is kind of like an update of how long it's been since status files have been updated. And you can see that, you know, maybe status files aren't updated as often as they should be. Some, some for instance, uh, Nemo here hasn't updated their status file in a long time, um, almost since when they started. Uh, these were some counts of, of Oh, this is, so this is status update count. So this commits the pil piling status file in the previous two, four and nine months. I don't think that's of value. Um, so I think we can eliminate some of these things. This is the number of committers. This actually comes from LDAP, uh, uh, an LDAP JSON file that uh, Whimsy provides that. So this is the true number of committers. Uh, this is the number of new committers, and that only works if this really only works if you're using uh, the the status file to provide news on com on new committers. And as you can see, not everyone does that. <laughs> Very few actually. So um, I think that information kind of changes now. What um, what we can do is um, from the LDAP file, it tells you when the last time the the list uh, the list was updated. So we can say how recently um, there was an update to um, the membership list, either PMC or whatnot. And then we can, these are, these are all things that we should continue in one way or another. So, and we can add has download page to this list. Okay, the clutch analysis also um, has some, and this is nice to see a, such a small group because we don't have a lot of issues with things. Um, here's a list of all the active mentors, right? And how many people. Here, JBO is clearly our champion of being a mentor. Um, and then there's some notes. This is sort of notes on things created by the clutch, so that'll change a little bit. And this is what's on the and what's on the clutch page. Um, so the clutch page. And let's try to find an interesting one. And we might be nearing time. Um, So you know, the clutch page shows you, you know, more of a textual version of things. This should be changed to list now. Um, 
So we 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 can there's on Gitbox there's a repositories JSON that has all these all that has all this information on uh, the various project repositories, um, and then this is the release artifacts. Um, and if you notice, these have the correct um, URLs that you should be using on your download page. And then it has a, an errata list, so like events list or license or security list. So this helps, This exposing this better will help. Um, I think that's it. Uh, I'll open up for questions. Are there any questions? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, uh, John uh, asks, uh, how would you recommend new contributors find a mentor? Um, if Are you talking about individuals or um, projects? Uh, for um, projects, um, communities, I would recommend going to general at list and ask, say uh, you're looking for some mentors uh to consider um and or looking for a champion to help um uh determine if you want to become a an apache project and help make that decision um and um if it's an individual and you're looking for mentors to help you might want to go to the community development project <clears throat> dev at community apache.org <coughs> excuse me and um and they have i don't know how well it's used right now but there's a mentorship um uh, thing there um another way a new contributor as an individual could um uh get um help is to actually join a project and ask for help and say i i want to learn how to contribute uh, you can either pick a podling or pick a project and just join in. Um, uh, Curtis asks, how does this or how could it be used in conjunction with Kibble or other reporting systems talked about this week? Well, um, the Clutch report was developed, I think, probably about 12 years ago now. And it was initially a big, long Python program. And it was all the time. There was no Git. Everything was subversion based. Um, I suppose um, a conversation could be had with Kibble uh, about um, what kinds of information would they be interested in out of the clutch uh, process. So um, we could produce a file that they could then find on the website that they could ingest. Um, that would be that would be my suggestion. Uh, it might also be interesting to um, consume some of the kibble information into the clutch report. Um, I think it would definitely we have to be careful there because I, some of that stuff is it may not work really well, like the sentiment analysis and things like that. Um, it's that's kind of similar to some stuff that's been discussed with on diversity and inclusion. There's a conscious language uh, checker, um, which you know, depending on your project and code base, um, uh, may need significant tuning to be helpful. Um, like for example, suppose you're uh, Apache Poi um, and you implement um, uh, some um, standards and in the standards, 
the XML you're creating is going to use the phrase master somewhere because that's just the standard. And that's something that's never going to change, even though we'd like people to start, stop using that word uh, because of the connotation. Uh, are there any other questions? You're welcome, Curtis. Well, um, my, my talk on the ASF Pelican is in 90 minutes and it's on the community track. All right, thank you everyone, take care.